What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. In today's episode, we're out in the garden today. It's a beautiful day in the garden. It's like 55 degrees and I feel so blessed to be out here with all of you. So I hope your day is going great. I hope the weather is amazing wherever you're at. And I really hope that you're taking this opportunity to get out there and uh, just enjoy this beautiful weather. Uh, we're out here in the garden today and uh, just trying to uh, help some people out with their gardening questions. And one of those questions that a lot of you have, have had is how to bring soil from inside or from outside to inside. And the issue is, is that when you do that, you bring with it a lot of nasties, a lot of creepy crawlies. It might be things like, uh, you know, fungus and mildews, um, different mold spores and stuff might, might exist outside that you're bringing inside. It might also be creepy crawlies like, you know, it might be uh, aphids, um, it might be mealybugs, it might be white flies. It could even be spiders. Even though they, spiders don't affect your plants, they actually kind of help your plants, I don't want them in our house. You know what I mean? So there's, there's a lot of things that come in soil that you just don't want. And so a lot of people want to use their soil from outside because it can save them money. And if it's compost, like in our case, it's really good quality. It's very, you know, it's very nutritious. And so not only is it going to save you money, but it's going to be, it's going to be really good quality for you to use on your plants. And so it's the best of both worlds, but it comes with it, that negative side effect. And there's a couple simple things that you can do to prepare your soil outside to bring inside. And uh, that's what we're going to talk about. In our case here, we have our compost pile and it's a combination of finished and semi-finished. So what I'm going to do, and also to increase the quality of what I'm you know, using this for, I'm going to sift it. Now we have videos on how to make a compost sifter. I'd highly recommend that if you're on a budget, but I personally have fallen in love with, with this right here. All right. So like I said, we're just going to do this on our, on our hands and knees today over this tarp and that's totally fine. So I've got my compost in the compost sifter. I love this cause it's just so easy to use. I'm going to tip it up a little bit though so it doesn't fall off the top because the way that it's intended to use is you put it on a wheelbarrow and then it has a slight tilt to it so that all the all the stuff that's too big to fit through the the sifter falls out into a pile and you can throw that back in your compost pile it's real real nice design love it all right so as you can tell this stuff is beautiful it's so light and fluffy I really can't I really can't tell you in words just how incredible this texture feels. It's satisfying to say the least. But as you can tell, we have some, we have some unwanted visitors. You know, we've got a little centipede right there. There's, I saw a couple, couple worms. I did see a spider actually. Um, I, you know, I'm sure there's other, you know, larva and other little things. As you can tell, there's some, you know, there's some guests. There's some residents and we don't want these in our home. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use a cookie tray, a really, really dirty cookie tray. It doesn't look like it, <laughs> but it's dirty. There you go. You can see how dirty it is. The reason why is because I do care about my marriage and I would not dare use a nice cookie tray. So this is one that I got at a garage sale for 50 cents. Definitely a good investment for, uh, for this method. All right. So like I said, we're going to use this cookie tray and we're just going to put this compost into the cookie tray. Now you can do this as with as much or as little as you want, but I really love this method because it gives you really good, fine compost for you using like a seed starting mix, but it also allows you to sterilize it the easiest way, which is to sterilize it with heat. What we're going to do is we're going to put them in the oven. We're going to put uh, this tray in the oven here and we're going to bake it at 350 degrees for about 15, 20 minutes. And the reason why we're doing that is because we're going to be basically killing off anything, um, any you know, insects, any bugs, any pests, even any mold spores. Nothing can really survive over 130 degrees. And so you're gonna pretty much bake everything off with the exception of you know, the, the compost. It's gonna still retain its same quality. It's not gonna lose its quality. It's going to still retain its same fluffy, beautiful texture. It's still going to hold on to moisture. And the really great thing is that because of the fact that um, there's lots of nutrients in this, you're not going to lose your nutrients. You cannot lose nutrients through, uh, through baking when it comes to minerals. 
you know, if you're looking at like vitamin A, vitamin C, those things can be baked off. Those can actually be, be lost through the baking process. Um, they oxidize and they actually will uh, be, be lost. However, minerals, because they're elemental, they can't be baked off. They'll just simply stay here. So things like, you know, whether it's nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, um, iron, you know, all those things that are on the periodic table of elements, those beautiful nutrients, those minerals for your plants, they're going to stay in here. They're going to stay in here no matter if you bake them at 50 degrees, 100 degrees, 350 degrees, or even 550 degrees. So now, like I said, all we have to do is take this inside, bake it at 350 degrees for about 15, 20 minutes, and you'll be good to go. You'll notice the color will change a lot, and it will get a lot lighter. Obviously, that's because it's drying out. It's going to dry out. It's going to remove all this moisture, but also it's going to, um, you know, it's going to uh, be a lot lighter as well because there's not as much moisture. So it will be lighter in color and lighter in weight. But as soon as it gets wet, as soon as you put moisture into it, it's going to turn back into, uh, you know, uh, rehydrate back into this beautiful soil that it is right now. So there you go. There's the first method. Let's talk about the second one. So the second method to properly sterilizing your soil is to use water. Now, I prefer to use the oven method because of how quick and simple it is. I mean, you can be pretty much ready to use this in like 20 to 30 minutes. Obviously, you want to let it cool down first when you pull it out of the oven, but this is really simple to use uh, and it's very fast. So I prefer that method, but the second method also works. It's just not my preferred method for reasons that I'll get into. And it's like I said, using water. So what you're going to do is you're going to boil water and you're going to boil water and pour it onto the sifted compost mix. You still want to sift it, treat it just the same as you did the first method, but you're going to simply dump boiling water onto it. And the boiling water is going to be what's going to sterilize the compost. But you want to make sure that the water is hot enough to properly kill off all of the, uh, all, you know, all the funguses, pests, and creepy crawlies and things like that. So the water needs to be quite hot because what happens when you dump hot water onto cold soil, is it's gonna cool that water down real fast. And you need to make sure that it's gonna stay above 130 degrees for at least five minutes. And that's gonna ensure that everything is killed off. So if you can't keep it at 130 degrees for at least five minutes, that's one downside. The second thing with uh, doing this is the fact that the soil will then be saturated with water. So, you know, like I said, the first method, you can literally just take this once it's dry and, and it's been sterilized, you can put it in a Ziploc bag for years, five, 10 years, it'll still be the same bagged soil. So not a whole lot's gonna happen in five, 10 years if it's dry and sterilized and in like an airtight container. Nothing's gonna happen. However, if you have you know, soil that's saturated in water, you better be ready to use it because you can't put that back into a bag because what happens inevitably is you're gonna put that into a bag and that nasty mix over time things will kind of begin happening and you're going to have a nasty mess on your hands you cannot it's not shelf stable like that and so you got to be ready to use it and the third kind of reason uh, why i don't love it that much is because it's just dangerous at the end of the day i mean it's so easy to get burned wielding around a giant pot of boiling water and so for like really small quantities that you're going to be you know that you're going to need to use really quickly this will probably work in a pinch, but I'd pr much rather prefer throwing it in the oven for 15, 20 minutes. It's gonna be so much more simple and way less risk of you getting burned. If you can make a plate of cookies, you can use the oven method. So it's very simple. The third method that you can use is called the dehydration or just sit and wait method. This is actually, uh, it's a very effective method, but it takes a long time. Now this would be my preferred method except for the fact that a lot of times when you need the soil, you kind of need it within like a day to a week or so. If you have a couple months on hand and you just want to let this sit and you have the space to do it, this is a great method. And you can do lots of soil this way. How you actually properly prepare this uh, through the kind of the sit and wait method is by uh, sifting it. You still want to sift it. You put it out on a tarp. Put a tarp out in your garage or your base, well, not your basement, but maybe your garage or like a shed. Because <laughs> again, you want to let this sit and wait. And you put a very thin layer across the whole thing, maybe no more than a half inch to an inch thick. Well, once you wait, if you wait, say, you know, uh, 
a month and a half, two months or so, eventually all that water is going to dehydrate. It's going to dry out. And a lot of the, you know, uh, the, the creepy crawlies and things, they're not going to want to stay there because it's bone dry. And when it gets bone dry, there's no, there's not really a good home for them. And so they're going to end up leaving when it gets really dry. But the downside of that is it takes a long time to get it adequately dry and give them enough time to say, I don't want to live here. That's going to force them away, but it will take time. Also, when you dry it out, things like, you know, bacteria and fungi, a lot of them will, uh, a lot of them will also die because they need moisture to survive. So mold spores and bacteria spores and things like that, there still might be a few present because you're not sterilizing it. You're not actually, this is not actually a sterilization method as much as it is just kind of a preventative method. You're going to get rid of most of the things that you don't want, and you might still bring in a few of the things that you don't want, but not nearly as many. But you can do a whole lot more of it than you can with either of the first two methods. You can do four or five times as much, and it takes way less effort because you just you know, like I said, spread it on a tarp and let it dry for several months. So uh, those are the three methods that I have, you know, that I've heard of. There are, you know, there are other ones as well, but I can't necessarily stand behind them because I've never tried them one and I really don't recommend them number two. Um, you might have heard of using things like uh, hydrogen peroxide to sterilize your soil. I don't prefer that method because it's just very wasteful. It's very costly and it's not ideal in the least. Um, you know, you can use it it doesn't really work as good as the other methods in my opinion. And it's, like I said, really costly. There's also the method of freezing. Now freezing would require you to take all the soil and throw it in your freezer. After about, uh, you know, seven to 10 days in the freezer, most insects have actually been killed off. They, they won't be able to survive because it gets so cold, but you're still gonna have a lot of those mold and mildew funguses that just go dormant. And then when it warms up, they're gonna just come out of dormancy. So it's not a great preventative method. It's kind of the same as the dehydration method, only the fact that you have to throw all this soil into a freezer. So you gotta have room in the freezer, number one. You have to have uh, someone that's not gonna care that it's in the freezer, number two. And number three, you still have to have some time. So not a great method, but you know, throw that one in there because I know that I've heard of that one as well. So those are the three methods that I can recommend to properly sterilizing your soil to getting it ready to bring inside. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. If you did, make sure to throw a like up there. Subscribe if you're not yet already. And also, if you do need some seeds for your garden, make sure to check out mygardener.com. We just got the store fully stocked for the year, and so we're ready to go. We're so excited about the next gardening season, and I hope you guys are as well. So make sure to go check it out. We have free shipping on seed orders of $12 or more for US and Canada. We also have the largest selection of heirloom, organic, and non-GMO seeds that you're going to find just about anywhere. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you all learned something new, and we'll catch you all on the next episode. All right, grow bigger, go home, everyone. Bye.